Hello friends and we are back now in today's episode of let's play of drive club we are gonna compare hypercars yes that's right we are gonna compare those the fastest the most powerful the most engineered vehicles out in the world also in this game um, right away we are gonna step in to the race and let's check out Canada this time you know I feel like uh, we neglecting Canada a lot lately and um, that's not really that good let's step into this race over here this track now there are two ways of this track forward and backwards now we're gonna take a regular route uh, and we're gonna choose basically the the usual thing um, and I think six laps would be better than five um, because we want more time to exploit the power and the prowess of the vehicle yeah right away the sound is one of the dominant features in this car but also the precision of the vehicle it's so nimble on its feet when this car came out everybody anticipated something mind-blowing and uh, p1 really has delivered in some sort of the way it was hard to top off the f1 of course and uh, a lot of people had have been concerned with the way this car will came out and how it will be compared to the legendary p1 f1 i'm sorry but um with that much power it's hard to argue and uh, they really delivered with the aspect of brutal force and uh, acceleration of this vehicle it is very technical as well there are many things going on in this car and it's gonna be uh, one of the few cars that will go down in the history as being one of the most most epic cars as well I wanna also tell you that there is a button called I-Pass which makes uh, integrates Formula 1 technology into this vehicle and yes you heard me right there is this button right here and you can use it to give you electric boost now that electric boost reminds me of the the vehicles that were street racing back in the day with the NAS and when they used to be clicking the NAS buttons on the steer steering wheel and the cars were given 200 and even sometimes 300 more horsepower on top of their already powerful engines so it is pretty cool to notice this here there is also um, a button called DRS which also has the uh, features of the Formula 1 where the racer can control the downforce of the vehicle as you can see here I turned it on and once you brake it turns automatically off because air brake is used for the spoiler of this vehicle and uh, speaking of the spoiler and DRS it is a technology that this car has dominant compared to the other vehicles but they also are coming out with the aerodynamics that are automatically adjusted for the car's behavior and if you think that I'm hesitant to press that DRS all the time is because the car becomes more looser on the corners the DRS is good only if you're going down the straight line where you can exploit the car's potential by having more downforce and it will accelerate more 
now let me concentrate this um, lap and I feel like I can I can beat my past record here by having such a technical vehicle like this demands respect and very good brakes as well they are Akibano brakes they are not Brembo brakes like everybody else uses them so props to McLaren for using different technology and proving that other technologies are also very good and brakes on this thing are absolutely praised among enthusiasts and as many reviewers have noted the car has the best brakes out of all three hypercars being 918 by Porsche and of course Ferrari La Ferrari What a beautiful machine. This is just a track weapon. Okay, let's check out the time. One twenty eight eight thirty seven. Okay, next stop is the Ferrari and just listen to that sound oh my it is just uh, two levels higher than P1 it is absolute insane sound very engaging you just want to tear the asphalt in this thing and want to accelerate accelerate and accelerate you don't want to stop this is what this car does to the senses this car has V12 and uh, that sound of V12 from Ferrari is absolutely gorgeous with such a brutal force of acceleration and downforce this car dominates the track more than the P1 And it feels like this car has much more horsepower than just 20 more or 30 more than P1. The way it accelerates is absolutely incredible. Whatever they did to this car from Ferrari, it is absolutely interesting to drive and compare it to the P1 so where the P1 had to be pressed different buttons and you had to be engaged in the vehicles dynamics and the way it behaved in in LaFerrari 
you don't have to do none of these things because the car does everything for you and adjusts aerodynamics and tweaks the power to the point where this car needs it the most they both are rear wheel drive but that rear wheel drive is such a balanced rear wheel drive is the most balanced in the world and it's very noticeable in this car Brakes are also incredible on this thing. And it's just a weapon. This thing is just a weapon. Oh my, oh my. Very controllable. Those 950 horsepower has never been so controllable until Ferrari made La Ferrari absolutely incredible way to deliver such a power relentless speed relentless power delivery this is what the La Ferrari is known for And speaking of that power, I like how that speedometer is telling me exactly what I need to know and what type of speed I'm carrying through these crazy tight corners that this car is absolutely devouring and is just dancing on them. It just makes you work a little bit and then it gives you this feeling that you control the car and it's the half and the part of you Okay guys, let's check out the time here. We have 128,672. <laughs> Next up we have Roof CTR. Now this car is just a track mostly track vehicle and look at that huge steering wheel the thickness of it and the way this car delivers power is absolutely insane this car is not as powerful as, as P1 or the LaFerrari but CTR really proves itself by having much less weight and having that power delivery 
brutal power delivery with the turbo setup. As you hear whistling away on the background. But I feel like this vehicle needs to be given even more respect and time to learn than those two that we just tested because this thing has just too much power for its own good but I wish it turned better than those two because this is considered to be a hypercar but is not as much engineered than P1 or LaFerrari. He just has the regular recipe of stuffing huge engine with a huge power in a small and lightweight body. Reminds a little bit of the Hennessy Venom GT and something like AC Cobra from back in the day with just a lightweight body having such a huge engine in the front and so much power and car doesn't like to slide that much it feels like it's gonna break loose and crash and that's why there is less confidence driving this thing but you can really feel the brutal force of the acceleration on this vehicle Yes, indeed. And this steering wheel really makes me feel like I want to just hold it and feel how this car drives. And it had that feel to it, like that you want to just drive it. Because of that steering wheel. And look at the way this car accelerates. Oh wow. Just incredible. Good brakes as well, can't complain about brakes, but that could be attributed to the low weight of the vehicle as well. It helps a lot greatly to stop 3000 pound car rather than 4000 pound car.
Okay, let's check out the time. 1.30, guys, 1.30. Unfortunately, the technology is not there for this car and the low weight doesn't replace better technology it's just a low weight but still very good run okay guys up next we have the Jaguar wow I don't know why they never produced this car with such a sound and such a brutal acceleration makes you think that this car would be very popular as well and it also has same eye pass just like the P1 where you can press the button and accelerate even more than you already are that's incredible and just listen to that sound wow the best brakes out of three out of four definitely more nimble car but by how much is gonna help this car we'll see wow not as nimble as the P1 but very forgiving car the car doesn't punish you for the mistakes I absolutely love when you press the button the car becomes berserk noticeable change in the traction by the third lap and it really helps this car be even faster
Okay guys, let's check out the time. 130. <laughs> okay, that's really good. S being such a underpowered compared to other two hyper cars with hybrid drivetrain, it's not so bad. The weight played a big difference here by having a uh, more weight it was a little slower okay and finally we have F1 LM just look at this cockpit sitting in the middle of things just absolute way of the race car and this how the production vehicles also came they had to change the law in order for this car to be possible to be seated for the driver in such a location right in the middle of the car but because of that car has two seats on the side and it could seat three people easily without back seats incredible machine just notice the way this car accelerates with such a power and such engineering this car is just so dominant on the track where other hypercars with drivetrains dominate with brutal force this thing is just light and has a very good way of power delivery by McLaren and it just doesn't stop except when you press the brake pedal very good turn in very easy to direct the car and put wherever you want on the road as you can see there half drift of that corner was absolutely controlled by me and it was not hard to do compared to the other vehicles that we tested oop a little bit too much there Okay, let's see, we have a final lap. very confident on that corner
looks like we have a finish. Let's check out the time, guys. Oh, those massive wheels in the back. And there you go. On par with the hypercars. Well done, F1 LM. So I think we can assume that um, technology is the same as having lightweight but when that lightweight has a very good heritage and very good engineering behind it. And also guys tell me what you think in comments is the winner today in this competition. Um, I feel that uh, this F1 LM is just absolute uh, monster on the track and it's hard to compete with it but I feel like as technology grows and um, the more cars coming out and the more uh, experience uh, car manufacturers have they just gonna keep doing good cars just like this one in the past and it's just uh, you know mankind's engineering and um, automotive um, techniques that people use and it's just very interesting how and by how much each car is gonna be faster than the other one so let me know in the comment section which one you thought really today impressed you in this competition okay guys see you next time this was game file